I um, tap danced to my way to success in second grade. It went right to my head. I absolutely adored the applause. It was incredible. Um, after that, of course, I played Jack and the Beanstalk's mother, which was um, really uh, something quite interesting. Um, I, I often talk about it because um, I, uh, I clearly remember um, the giant coming in and my saying, just a minute, I have to get the muffins out of the oven and put Jack in there which I did, but of course I stopped in the midst and ate the muffins. Uh, the play was a little bit sketchy after that because I guess I rewrote the whole thing till I got to the end, but the applause was marvelous. Never got over it. After that, uh, for some strange reason, I started to do live television shows from the age of, oh, um, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And my mother arranged for me to miss an entire week out of every month and do television. She simply said, the day she fails, she will stop acting. Until then, she will act. I thought that was a frightfully good mother. I remember my agent called me and said, there is a man by the name of Bob Costello. And uh, he would very much like you to come see him in his office. At that point, I had done 150 live television shows, guest starring in all of them, and I wasn't about to audition. And so I went to his office and I said, now I'm not going to audition for this. If you want to show me the script, fine. And I read this marvelous um, soliloquy that the Phoenix had. I read it to myself in his office and I said, can I read this to you? <laughs> Suddenly, I wanted to, you know, just let him know how it was um, not acting. It was me. And um, he said, okay, you got the part. And I said, well, thank heavens, because I am a phoenix. And that's how it started. I don't know how I can possibly describe Laura Collins. I simply was Laura Collins. Um, she was half human and half metaphysical, which allowed me to literally become the phoenix. I never for one moment thought I wasn't one. And maybe that made it very easy for me to do, and maybe it made it very believable for all those who love the phoenix to accept me as one. The phoenix is um, a myth, a fabulous, wonderful myth that will go on obviously long after we're gone and has gone on from the beginning of time. Why? Because it is the um, definition of reincarnation. It allows us all to understand and believe, if we're believers of anything, uh, that um, at no time do we not exist. We simply move from life to death, to life to death, and so on. Each place more exciting than the next. There's nothing bad about death. A phoenix would know. Laura Collins was, aside from being a metaphysical, being a, a myth, being human, and being all those things, was primarily a mother. Which, of course, was easy for me, because that's what I am, primarily, a mother. Um, I could tell you lots of things about um, Laura Collins, um, because what happens when you have well-written dialogue, um, it, in, it invites um, things to pop into your mind and come out of your mouth. And that's what I really did. I took Laura Collins and the Phoenix and, and um, made it all one, made it human when necessary, uh, and made it uh, greater than human, farther than human 
totally spiritual, totally strange, very different, but hopefully believable to those watching. How and why? I believed it. Why wouldn't they? Is there no evil in life? Um, are we all perfect? Are we all saints? No. Uh, is there a dark side? I don't like the word evil. No. Laura Collins was not evil. Um, the phoenix um, has a variety of sides that would be too long and too great for me to explain. Um, Laura Collins was a human being at times, when necessary. Uh, of course she would do anything that had to be done that she felt was correct. Now, um, maybe if you can make miracles, maybe they're not all perfect, but they're still miracles. She made miracles. Were they all marvelous and wonderful? No. Are we all marvelous and wonderful? No. Do we try to be? She tried. I tried. And I hope it came out okay. Laura Collins decidedly was frightened by a variety of things that when she was actually in the state of being a phoenix, you don't have. When she was the mother, she was a normal, average, loving mother. She wasn't something else then. She worried. She could be frightened. She could be happy. She could be anything you want and anything any other human is. That's the great thing about the two sides of us all. It's just that we don't realize that we all are um, different at different times. Um, and how does that come about? It comes about if we truly know who we are. And that can be very frightening because we're not all perfect, are we? And she certainly wasn't all perfect. The phoenix didn't have to be perfect because the phoenix was a living spirit. The phoenix was here among humans to show that there is much more in life than just being a human being. There was no way that I could have done what I did without great writers. They were great writers. They must have felt something that I felt, or they couldn't have written what they did. I certainly didn't change what was written exactly. Um, I did put a lot into it because it was well written. I put myself into it. Yes, I reworded words or changed things a bit. Um, but it was so well written that it inspires you to carry the character um, farther than the writers anticipated, I believe. So, um, I, I could only say I possibly put myself um, into it by becoming what I thought the writers wanted. Now, I think that's very confusing and maybe no one will understand it, but it's the best I can explain. I did indeed try to be more than they ever expected. I hope that I was. I think that um, when you have a character that is well written and you like that character, whether that character is an axe murderer or a sweet simpering nothing, if you like the character, you are very able to become that person. There was no challenge at all for me to be Laura Collins. I adored the whole thing from day one. Um, very rarely did I find a line that I needed to make more, uh, more clear it, it, about what I was saying. It, I simply became Laura Collins without the slightest moment of difficulty. But then um, 
I believe truly in everything I've ever done, that I step out of myself without losing myself, and the character enters in. I can only compare the ease with which I did Laura Collins with a, a character that I did a few years before, which was a 90-year-old woman, in which I had to change my voice and speak quite differently, in which I had a mask over my face, strange hair. It, it wasn't difficult. It was wonderful. I mean, I love being someone else. What a great gift it is to be an actor and to be able to step, step into someone else's life and actually live it.